As per the traditions of the Aligarh Muslim University, we begin our program with Kirat. So I would like to request Ms. Mr. Taha bin Tasneem to recite a Kirat from the Holy Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على إن يكن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله أولى بهما فلا تتبعوا الهوى أن تعدلوا وإن تلوا أو تعرضوا فإن الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا Believers, be upholders of justice and bearers of witness to truth for the sake of Allah. Even though it may either be against yourselves or against your parents and kinsmen, or the rich or the poor, for Allah is more concerned with their well-being than you are. Do not then follow your own desires lest you keep away from justice. If you twist or turn away from the truth, know that Allah is well aware of all that you do. Honorable President of the Law Society, the Dean Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim University, Professor Muhammad Ashraf, the In Charge Law Society, Professor Muhammad Tariq, Faculty Members of the Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim University, Vice President of the Law Society, Ms. Noria Rafi, Secretary of the Law Society, Ms. Ratif Jawe, Secretary Moot Court, Mr. Aman Alam, fellow Joint Secretaries, and everyone who has joined us today, Assalamu Alaikum. I am Prachi Gupta, and I am serving as the Joint Secretary of the AMU Law Society. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you, the students of the batch of 2020 and 2021, to your new university and your new home for the next five years. So to you students, welcome. I congratulate each student, each of you, first, for having secured your university place, and second, for having a good sense to choose to study at the Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim University. I am sure you're eager to know what lies ahead of you, and this is why I am here to say a few introductory words about the heart of your university experience, which you are about to embark. The Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim University is supported by profoundly knowledgeable faculty that constantly works to find better ways to enhance our learning experience and help us students all along this law school journey. Our incredibly talented faculty will be your guides and allies throughout this journey. Needless to say, they are our greatest resource. The faculty offers hugely ranging opportunities for students in research and extracurricular activities. So work hard and engage with all the opportunities that come your way. Here at AMU, you will be offered just the right opportunity to become successful in your career, be it a judicial officer, a prominent academician, or an exceptional lawyer that this country has ever had. Now that things are all good, but that one thing you are going to embrace during your time in college is the culture of this university. Even though I haven't left this place still, not a pass out yet, but one thing that I already know is that I am going to take this culture, this culture of Algar Muslim University with me forever, because once an Algerian, always an Algerian. I would encourage you to take advantage of AMU's position as one of India's premier educational institutions. While our connection with AMU, the Sir Sayyid's Chaman, roots us in this unique place with its rich history and fond traditions, we derive a sense of who we are in this place from a long history of faculty, students, and staff in this university who have come here to study. So engage with your faculty, peers, and everyone here. Two years ago, I was also sitting at your place waiting for this journey of life to start. 
and trust me this is going to be the best roller coaster ride of your life full of fun knowledge growth and ultimate success the day you'll end this journey you'll surely miss the memorable time that you're going to spend here you might also be anxious at this point thinking I'm of I'm what will be thinking of what will be your place like here how will you adjust here and sundry other questions even i had similar questions but one thing that i realized early on was how kind and welcoming the people of amu are and the sense of community that pervades in this campus so believe me you are set up to experience the best in the upcoming 5 years of your law school journey yes it might get overwhelming sometimes but you will be able to figure out everything for yourself and in the end it will be all worth it i hope you'll discover during this orientation what i have discovered in my 2 years in this faculty that you have entered a lively challenging diverse and warm community finally i want you to know that this entire university community is here to support sustain and encourage you as you join us i speak for this entire faculty staff and the amu law society in saying we are so happy you have made the decision to join us thank you so much thank you so much prati for this very warm welcome now i would like to welcome our dean professor mohammad ashraf to extend his welcome address and greet all our newcomers with his inspiring words ashraf sir on to you thank you albina and prachi gupta today we have the welcome address for the youngsters who have been recently admitted uh, in the faculty of law so good morning and assalam alaikum to everybody especially the youngest members of the family is the dearest of all of us so you all are dearest to me i on behalf of all the teachers researchers and senior students welcome you together to this prestigious institute of learning and epitome of knowledge tradition and heritage thanks to the noble efforts of our founder sir sayyad ahmed khan law studies began in december 1891 following the proposal of the committee consisting justice sayyad mahmood justice state of allahabad high court and arthur strategy strategy advocate of the allahabad high court the department grew into full fledged faculty of law in 1960 this institution has a rich history a unique tradition and a unique and a culture unlike any other law school across the nation the responsibility of taking that legacy forward now rests on your shoulder i am hopeful and optimistic that you will sail through this period of your law school and learn not more one but more many more lessons throughout i wish all the same and blessed life career and stay in this university we all realize that this is the difficult phase in which we cannot see physically in the classrooms and we obviously feel your presence and miss you all but we wish and pray that soon the covid protocols get over and this life threatening disease is finally gone for good for from every one of us from everywhere we are eager to see you in the physical classrooms setting and are excited to welcome you all on the campus very soon but till this facility is not provided to you we would like you 
all to take full passionate and keen interest in engaging with the online process of learning we ensure our full support and trust for your overall development we would like to connect you all in a way to transform you as a just and law abiding citizen who are very sensitive and compassionate persons from within we cannot only look at you as those who receive training to complete syllabus but we shall also look at you and have the belief in you that you all will make us very proud one day we hope that all will convert into agents of social change and do your best for the society i wish you all practice values of justice in every sphere of your life extending all best wishes for a great career ahead welcome once again to the law faculty aligarh muslim university you will find me here for you as a guiding force and a helping hand throughout your stay here and after as well never hesitate in asking the right questions it is after all this approach that will mold you into a perfect student of law so one thing i must tell you that during your career please be very very uh, especially you you should be very studious respectable to your especially to your seniors and avoid unnecessary things discuss and consult only for studies do not engage in any irresponsible activities and i hope the best for all of you for all of you for the near future thank you very much Thank you so much, Ashraf sir. You are an inspiration for all of us, indeed. Your beneficial insights and approach truly instill the sense of belongingness in our hearts and minds. Moving forward, I would like to ask you all a few questions. Don't you miss sitting in physical classroom or going to the library? The smell of those pages, the warmth of those friendly conversation with your peers, and so much more. Indeed. nothing can replace the charisma of being physically present in the classroom yet we have put in all our efforts to make you witness the glories of this great institution and give you a feel of what is in store for you all so are you ready to be amazed then get your eyes glued to the screen as you are about to witness a very lovely glimpse of our second home our very own faculty of law Hello, I'm Sabi. Hi, I'm Alvina. We, We welcome, welcome you all, all to, to the, the Faculty, Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim, Muslim, Muslim University. University. Legal education here at Aligarh Muslim University has been ongoing for over a century. Started at the initiative of our founder, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, law classes began in December 1891. In 1960, the department was converted into a full-fledged faculty. Since then, this institution has been imparting legal education and has been ranked as one of the best law colleges in the country. A long list of alumni to boast of, Faculty of Law AMU has been home to many illustrious jurists, including chief justices and judges from four different countries, prominent academicians, civil servants, exceptional lawyers, and judicial officers. Allow us to take you on a great tour of this great institution, which has rich culture, heritage, and tradition. We hope that the Faculty of Law, Aligarh Muslim University, serves as a stepping stone to great life and success. Welcome, Welcome aboard. aboard. Walking through the gates of the faculty, the first place of which you would catch a glimpse is our moot court hall. Mooting is an indispensable part of a law student's life, which inculcates in him the art of advocacy. Therefore, a moot court hall is, in many ways, the heart of any law school. 
This building is the moot court hall of the Faculty of Law. Its foundation stone was laid on 17th October 2009 by Justice A. M. Ahmadi, former Chief Justice of India, and the building was finally inaugurated on 12th March 2011 by former Union Minister Mr. Salman Khushi. This great hall has been a witness to many great chapters in the faculty's history and has seen many legal luminaries step foot into it. It has also been the venue of Sir Sayyid and Surana and Surana National Criminal Law Moot Court Competition, our flagship event. Welcome to the Law Seminar Library. We call it the Seminar, the topper's chill zone and your best friend. On a regular day, you would see dozens of law students walking in and out of the room that lies behind this door. Come, let's take a look. This place where I stand is the issue counter from where you can get books issued from a collection of over 35,000 books we have. To my right, we have three computers just in case you need to do some immediate research. Our library is also very well connected to the campus internet. Here beside me is the catalogue. Just in case you need to find a source that you know of, you can come up to the catalogue which lists all the study material alphabetically with their respective call numbers. Get the call number and you shall locate the exact shelf on which the study material is located. This place where I stand is the book bank. The book bank provides us with the facility to issue academic books for a year at nominal prices. This board here displays the periodical subscriptions we have, including all England law reports, Supreme Court cases, and of course, the Allegory Law Journal and AMU Law Society Review. We just have to go up to the librarian and take the name of the periodical with the specific issue and you shall have access to it in a jiffy. This is the first floor of the seminar, which is known as the Research Division, specifically for LLM and PhD scholars. Hi everyone. So you have seen your mood foot hall and your seminar library. Now consider a situation where you are drafting memorial for your mood court competition or you are researching for your papers, projects or tutorials. What you are going to need the most is digital resources. But don't worry, our computer lab has got it all covered. Situated on the first floor, recently renovated, it has computers well equipped with a new internet facility and Maulana Azad Library's vast digital resources. In addition to this, we have faculty access for Manupatra Legal Research Platform. And once you are done writing, you can get your writings checked for plagiarism. But most importantly, we also have remote access to LexisNexis Research Platform, which you can access directly from your home by the login credentials provided by the faculty. Meanwhile, the fight against COVID-19 continues, the seminar library is going to be inaccessible. So the digital resources are going to be your greatest ally. With over thousands of books, papers and study materials available digitally, our lab is going to be there for your help as your prime research facility. Our computer lab eagerly awaits your presence until the pandemic ends over. Subha ki bhook mitana hai? Ya class chhodne ka bahana hai? Exam se pehle wala padna padhana hai? Teacher ki dart ya senior ki seek liye jana hai. Yaro ke saath ek cup chai ka nazar aana hai. Khatti meethi saari yaadon ka yehi khazana hai. Tumhain bhi jal, humari faculty ki canteen aana hai. Ek ek karke huye jate hai taare roshan. Apni manzil ki taraf unke qadam aate hai. Yeh faiz ka ek shair hai, jise mein zara asa tabdeel karke आपके लिए पढ़ रहा हूँ। इसके मायने यही हैं कि जब एक शख्स इस दुनिया में अपनी मंजिल की तरफ कदम बढ़ाता है, तो तारे भी जगमगा के उसकी राह को रोशन कर देते हैं। ये कदम लेने वाले आज आप हैं और इस फैकल्टी के टीचर्स और सीनियर्स आपकी मदद के लिए तैयार हैं। Ladies and gentlemen, I, being the secretary of the law society, welcome you all to this esteemed institution. The journey ahead is long. Make some good friends along the way and live the life that you have dreamed of. This is Atul Jan. Sign.
I hope this small attempt of familiarizing you with the faculty was a success. Now I would like to call Professor Muhammad Tariq sir for guiding you through the course structure. Over to you, Tariq sir. I guess I say not audible. And uh, just uh, watching a very beautiful uh, video, uh, uh, just my entire team, including uh, at the leadership of uh, Professor Ashraf Saab, the Dean and Chairman, uh, you have made a very, very, very beautiful video. Uh, really, you appreciate, uh, you deserve for the appreciation, my dear friends. Uh, thank the Viva, uh, respected Dean and Chairman, Faculty of Law, uh, Professor Saab, and my dear friends. Uh, <clears throat> you know that uh, uh, this uh, induction program or the orientation program, uh, the Dean Saab has deputed me just to explain the examination process and uh, I have to deliver on the uh, examination procedure, uh, either also midterm examination, entry examination, and project and uh, session test, etc. Et et so, you know, my dear friend, this is the five year integrated semester system course under CBCS system. And uh, you are very much in the, entered in the BLB honors, honors, BLB honors degree. You know that the uh, last year uh, our society has not conducted the orientation program uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, but now this uh, uh, society members and office bearer uh, has taken this responsibility and taken this task. And they are doing uh, very hard work from the last 10 days or 10 to 15 days. So really I am very, very thankful to them and uh, particularly office bearers and the deans up. Uh, my dear student, I will explain the examination procedure, what the examination process is, particularly for the uh, first semester students and uh, third semester also, in mean, meaning there by the first and second year. Uh, but always remember that uh, we are in the midst of the pandemic. So to just facilitate the students some pattern of examination and evaluation may be changed. Uh, for example, online teaching, online examination and the change of pattern of weightage. But remember, remember, it is for the time being. Otherwise, the, the pattern is that uh, this course is uh, uh, BLB course. Uh, the duration of this uh, BLB honor degree course uh, has five academic years. And each academic year is divided into two semesters, autumn and spring. And uh, the autumn semester is normally commenced in the month of July or August uh, every year. Uh, and the spring in the month of December uh, and January, either December or January in each year. The duration of each semester is about 100 working days. Uh, due to uh, the pandemic or due to the corona uh, situation, some uh, pattern has been changed for the time being. For the time being. Otherwise, the system is this. It has been passed by the Board of Study and passed by the Academic Council. So the, the, there, there would be uh, total 10 semesters and, and it will be just uh, bifurcated into five academic years. And every semester, uh, autumn semester will be started from either the month of July or August or uh, spring in the month of December or January. And the duration of each semester is about 100 working days. And uh, what about the attendance when the classes are regular and will be regular inshallah in the coming days? That the BLB course prescribes 75% attendance in aggregate and 65% uh, in each paper. Total 75% attendance in, in uh, aggregate and 65% in each paper. And the students whose attendance is short of requirement will not be eligible to appear in the end semester examination. And all marks obtained in any component of the course evaluation will stand cancelled. So it has, it is the importance of the attendance in our faculty. Uh, and inshallah, inshallah I, I hope and we hope that in the coming time when the pandemic is over, then the offline classes will be started and this uh, uh, attendance system will be uh, implemented very strictly. 
Now come to the examination and evaluation. Uh, this is necessary to bring it into your kind notice that the Department of Law has adopted CBCS system of evaluation. And the examination for the degree of BLLB honors shall comprise of 10 semester examination and each semester the candidate shall be examined in the papers of a study prescribed by the, uh, by the Department of Law and the Faculty of Law so as to earn a total of 260 credits. So 260 credits to earn is, is uh, compulsory, is mandatory. And uh, uh, what, what are the uh, components of the evaluation? Uh, my dear student, uh, you know that each paper shall be evaluated out of 100 marks. Each paper shall be evaluated out of 100 marks. And the subject, or you can say the paper, will normally have some components of evaluation. First, uh, sessional, tutorial, project, etc. 40% marks. Generally, there are two general class tests called as GCT, general class test. Question for first general class test normally arises from unit first of syllabus. And the questions of second GCT, means general class test, arises from unit fourth. So the first GCT arises from uh, first unit and the second GCT general class test arises from unit fourth. Evaluation of tutorials and projects are assessed by the concerned teacher uh, allotted by the department. These all sessional tutorial projects comprise 40% marks out of 100. Remember, these all sessional tutorial projects comprise 40% marks out of 100. Now, another component is, uh, uh, there's a second component, is uh, it's called a mid-semester examination. This mid-semester examination comprises of and carries weightage of 20% marks out of 100. So, 40% marks out of 100 just goes to the session tutorial projects and 20% uh, just goes to mid-semester examination. And this very faculty holds a mid-semester examination in the mid-session of the semester. And questions are assured from the first three units. Questions are assured from the first three units. And weightage is 20% marks out of 100. And the third uh, component is end-semester examination. Uh, and that is 40%. The third component of uh, evolution is end semester examination, which will have weightage of 40% marks, the remaining 40% marks out of 100. And in the end semester examination, the questions from all the five units are asked. So the first GCT, the first general class test, just is the question is asked from the first unit. Uh, general class test second, uh, generally question, uh, question is asked from the fourth unit. And the mid uh, semester examination questions are asked from the last, first, second, and third, any uh, first three units. And end semester examination, uh, the questions from all the five units are asked. And it has 40% marks. So, and, and the, uh, another uh, uh, component is the via Bosi examination. Uh, that's 100 marks. The last component of assessment is Vyabosi. That's called a grand Vyabosi examination, and which will comprise of 100 marks. And this grand Vyabosi examination is generally held when the end semester examination is over. And it has 100 marks weightage. So, again, I'm repeating that the uh, the, so each paper shall be evaluated out of 100 marks as sessional tutorial project at sector 40 percent marks mid semester examination 20 percent means 40 plus 20 60 and the end semester examination 40 means 100 40 plus 20 plus 40 total 100 this this is the pattern of the evaluation in the faculty of law uh, my dear students uh, always remember that the combined mass obtained by a student in various components of evaluation of a paper shall be converted into regular letter grades 
with their equivalent grade points. So another question is now that you have appeared in all three examination, uh, all three component of the examination and including viable examination of 100 marks. Now, what, what will be the pattern of the grading system? Now it has been decided by the department that uh, what will be the uh, pattern of the grading system. Uh, you know that the letter grades O, if you have just uh, called it the O grade, it denotes outstanding. Grades O denotes outstanding. If the candidate obtains O grade, it means he or she is in the range of 80 to 100 marks. Again, again, I am repeating that if the candidate obtain O grade, it means he or she is in the range of 80 to 100 marks. Because in the grading system, uh, always there, there is a, always a range of the marks. And here, O uh, grade means that the candidate or the student has uh, obtained the range of 80 to 100 marks. Another grade, the letter the A grade. This grade A denotes good. This grade A, O denotes outstanding, A denotes good. And the range of mass is 65 to 79. 65 to 79. And uh, letter grade B denotes average. And the range of mass is 50 to 64. While letter grade P denotes pass and the range of the mass is 40 to 49. So O denotes outstanding, A denotes good, B, B, B means average and the letter grade P denotes pass only. And O, uh, the range of the O is uh, 80 to 100 and the range of the grade A is 65 to 79 and the uh, grade B, uh, B's range is 50 to 64 and P's range is 40 to 49 marks. Meaning thereby letter grades O, A, B and P in a paper means that the candidate has passed the subject or paper. The F grade denotes poor performance. If uh, God forbid any students obtain the uh, F grade, that means he has got poor performance. He has given his poor performance. That is failing in the subject paper. That means that student has to appear at subsequent examination until a passing grade is obtained during maximum duration allowed for completion of the course. There are students, uh, the, suppose any, any, any candidate or any student uh, has uh, awarded AB grade, AB, A capital B small. The AB grade is awarded when a student does not appear in the examination of the course. AB means absent. This is an abbreviation of the absent. So, AB grade is awarded when a student does not appear in the examination of the course. And further, the grade is X. The X grade is awarded to a student if he or she does not complete any project, dissertation, training or other such assignment prescribed in the curriculum. If any student has not completed project, dissertation, training or other such assignment prescribed in the curriculum, then the X grade is awarded. This will be converted uh, to a regular grade on the completion of the requirement. Another grade, the Y grade. The Y grade is awarded to a student if he or she has been detained in that paper. The Y grade is awarded to a student if he or she has been detained in that paper due to shortage of the attendance requirement. If your attendance is short, then the Y grade will be awarded. So, uh, to pass each semester examination, 
a candidate must obtain at least 40% marks in the midterm and the end term written papers taken together. Again, this is the point that has to be repeated that uh, to pass each semester examination, uh, a student must uh, obtain at least 40% of the marks midterm and end term written papers taken together and 50% of the marks in the viability examination. Suppose you are appearing in the grand viability examination which uh, has the weightage of 100 marks and you have to obtain minimum 50% marks. And third is the 40% of the mark in the session or project work in each paper. So the last criteria is the 40%. It is only passed. It's called only if you, have, you suppose uh, a student has uh, got or has obtained 40% mark, that means the poor performance is just he or she is only passed. So uh, now come to the result. What is the result? Uh, if a student passes all the examination, and uh, fulfills all the requirements for the award of the degree, his result will be shown as graduated. His result will be shown if a student passes all the examination and fulfill all the requirements. Suppose uh, pass the examination but not fulfill all the requirements, for example, uh, the training program, suppose he or she has not uh, joined. Uh, then the it it is it it means that he or she has not uh, fulfilled all the requirement. So it is necessary that the student has to pass all the examination and all the requirement uh, for the award of the degree. Then his result will be shown as graduated. Uh, dear student, uh, always remember that the division awarded to graduated student will be based on CGPA because the department has adopted the CBCS CBC system and uh, according to this CBCS system the, the first division the will you obtain first even when you will have this uh, with distinction with the CGPA 8 and above if you just want to get uh, the first division with distinction then do you have to obtain minimum CGP 8 and above. If any student uh, has a range of the CGP of 6.50 to 7.99, then it is the first division. And if any student has obtained CGP of 5.0 to 6.499, then it means it's a second division. So now we have come to the promotion that, uh, okay, it's a clear, I think, uh, it's not confusion, it's very, very it's clear thing. And the department, uh, uh, there is no confusion at all. And the student has uh, also not confused about it because it's very much clear. It has been passed by the Board of Study of the department and uh, even the, all the, uh, the uh, 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 relevant bodies and the uh, authenticated body has passed this, uh, uh, CBCS system and uh, uh, another issue is the promotion. A, a candidate whose sessionals are clear, a candidate whose sessionals are clear but has failed to pass in the written paper or papers. A candidate whose sessionals are clear uh, but has failed to pass in the written paper or paper or more than one paper or the viability examination, the first semester examination may be allowed by the Dean Faculty of Law to pursue the course of a study for the second semester examination. But no candidate shall be promoted to the third, fifth, seventh and the ninth semester unless he or she has passed in all subjects, all papers preceding semester examination and secured CGPA 5. Again, it's, it's a, it's the issue it has to be repeated that uh, and the second time we have I have to share with you that if a candidate whose sessionals are clear but has failed to pass in the written paper, sessional has to be clear. Sessionals have to be clear. It's necessary. It's a mandatory. If the sessionals are clear but has failed to pass in the written paper or in the interim examination 
और पेपर्स और बाय वो सी एग्जामिनेशन इन दी फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन में बी अलाउड बाय दी अथॉरिटी अथॉरिटीज द डीन फैकल्टी ऑफ लॉ टू परसू द कोर्स ऑफ स्टडी फॉर द सेकंड सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन बट नो कैंडिडेट शैल बी प्रमोटेड टू द थर्ड फिफ्थ सेवेंथ और नाइन्थ सेमेस्टर अनलेस ही और शी हैज पास्ड इन ऑल सब्जेक्ट्स और पेपर एग्जामिनेशन और द प्रीसीडिंग सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन एंड सेक्योर सीजीपीए फाइल otherwise the promotion will not be there now uh, come to the recent examination uh, suppose uh, the any student uh, who has n- uh, not appeared in any paper or suppose he is failed or she is failed in any paper then what will be uh, done what will have what, what will you, what will you do so there is a, there is a provision of the recent examination and this recent examination shall be open to the candidate of each semester Who have not appeared in the paper or papers in the main examination due to medical or any other justified reason, but have cleared sessional. Again, sessional have to be clear here yeah. also. So the recent examination shall be open to the candidate of each semester who have not appeared in the paper or. more than one paper paper or papers in the main examination due to uh, medical or any other justified reason but have cleared a sessional examination well uh, clear sessional all the session so that the recent examination shall be limited to the written papers and viable sea examination and the marks obtained earlier in the sessional shall be carried forward while determining the grade in the course remember that revolution is not allowed in recit examination the recit is also a second chance so to to remember revolution is not allowed in recit examination and now journey uh, should ask about the improvement you know, what is the provision of the improvement in, in the uh faculty of law so the candidate obtaining 50% or more marks uh in written paper or in any subject other than seminar or clinical may if he so desires to appear in the main semester examination written papers in that subject with the prior permission of dean faculty of law to obtain in written uh paper at least 15 days before the scheduled examination and such opportunity for improvement shall only be available once such opportunity of improvement uh, shall only be available once in two papers of the semester at the immediately following main semester examination in the course that is the provision of the improvement so my dear student this was the examination evolution process for blb honors examination Uh, and my dear students uh, you know that the various times this faculty has ranked number 1 among the institutions those are imparting legal knowledge and uh, this is also pertinent to bring to your uh, notice that the uh, product of the products of this faculty are contributing in each and every field of legal spheres and they are doing their best to make this faculty proud and this faculty also expects a lot from your side also Uh, you are not uh, now not only the future of this great seat of learning, but country as well. Your discipline, career focus, and relentless efforts of life, uh, inshallah, can make a difference. As in charge of law society, it is my foremost duty to render a big thank to the respected dean and chairman, faculty of law, Professor Muhammad Ashraf Sahab, and office bearers of the law society particularly, and my dear post holders, you deserve for the uh, appreciation. you have managed such a fantastic program in this pandemic era and at last i wish all of you a very good luck for the future endeavors thanks to all thank you so much tarik sir that was really enlightening now that you are familiar with the walls and pillars of the faculty i would like you to introduce with the people who really make the faculty in its real sense our teachers the teachers of the faculty faculty of law are one of the most important support system for us to grow as an individual as a student and as a future legal scholar no matter what we choose in life the teachings of the faculty members will remain embedded in our minds for an eternity because it is here where we begin to learn and what we later implement in life 
In my three years of law school, most of which have been virtual, I have been more honored and grateful to have teachers who have made the process of learning easier even in a virtual setup. The teachers have always been up for unique discussions on law and clarifying for each and every doubt I ever had. Now, moving ahead, I would like you to introduce with our teachers. I'll share my screen now. Starting with Professor Muhammad Ashraf, Dean and Sir, Dean and Chairman of the Faculty. His fields of interest are criminal law, law of evidence, mercantile law, and insurance law. Professor Iqbal Ali Khan, Sir, his areas of interest are family law, property law, interpretation of statutes, and constitutional law. Professor Javed Talib, Sir, his areas of interest are law of evidence, law of contract, and environmental law. Professor Muhammad Zafar Mehfuz Nomani, Sir, his fields of interest are intellectual property law and environmental law. Professor Shakil Ahmed, sir, his areas of interest are criminal law, criminology, code of civil procedure, and constitutional law. Professor Badr Ahmed, sir, his fields of interest are constitutional law, mass media law, and international trade law. Professor Muhammad Wasim Ali, sir, his areas of interest are family law and law of evidence. Professor Muhammad Tariq, sir, his fields of interest are labor laws, constitutional laws, and legal theory. Professor Hashmat Ali Khan, sir, his fields of interest are procedural law, family law, criminal law, and contract law. Professor Mohammad Rehmatullah, sir, his areas of interest are economics, competition, and international trade law. Prof Dr. Sheikh S. Shamuddin Ahmed, sir, his fields of interest are social legal history and Muslim personal law. Dr. Sayyid Ali Nawaz Zahidi, sir, his areas of interest are human rights and commercial laws. Dr. Muhammad Kalimullah, sir, his areas of interest are sociology, criminology. Mrs. Rabab Khan, ma'am, her areas of interest are criminal law, law of thought, and socio-economic offenses. Mr. Muhib Anwar, sir, his fields of interest are public international law, environmental law, and information technology law. Dr. Zeba Azmat, ma'am, her areas of interest are legal language, translation, and partition studies. Mr. Muhammad Nasser, sir, his fields of interest are company law and mercantile law. Dr. Gaurav, sir, his areas of interest are commercial laws, infrastructure laws, and Islamic finance. Dr. Tabassam Chaudhary, ma'am, his fields of interest are information technology law and commercial law. Dr. Afshar al Hassan Kidwai, sir, his areas of interest are uh, criminal procedure, law of evidence, and law of co uh, contract. Mr. Zakiuddin Khairudwala, sir, his areas of interest are criminal procedure, law of evidence, and contract law. Uh, Mr. Salil Kumar, sir, his fields of interest are civil procedure code and law of thoughts. Dr. Sain Faruqi, sir, his fields of interest are environmental law, constitutional law, and jurisprudence. Dr. Sajid Hamid, sir, his areas of interest are criminal law, criminal jurisprudence, and socio-economic offenses. Dr. Sayyid Muhammad Uzair Iqbal, sir, his areas of interest are labor law and intellectual property rights. Dr. S. Sam Ali, sir, his fields of interest are political science and international relations. This is a list of non teaching staff of our faculty members. Thank you so much. Thank you, FIFA, for introducing our juniors with our professors. It was a much needed insight. Now, I would like to invite the secretary, AMU Law Society, Mr. Atif Jave to introduce us all with the Law Society. He will also be taking up any questions or doubts that you people might have. So send in your, in your questions through the chat box, which you might find on the right side of your screens. Please send in the questions through the chat box only. Don't use the Q&A box. A member from the media cell will send all the relevant questions to Mr. Atif. Mr. Atif, over to you. Thank you, Prachi. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you for the generous introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, oh, perhaps it is two minutes past morning. Good afternoon. So my name is Atif, as you are well aware now. I'm the secretary of the Law Society. I'm here to discuss with you uh, particularly two things. Right? These two things are the things that I wish I knew when I was in first year. Right. 
So uh, I would first like to thank Professor uh, Muhammad Tarif sir for explaining it uh, in detail. But I'll also be taking up a little bit about our syllabus and about the examinations that are to be held. So I'll be presenting my screen now. So here you see, on the left you may see, uh, this is our syllabus, right? So what you need to understand here is that what we have in our faculty is, uh, in a particular year, we have two semesters. One is the odd semester and another is the even semester. So both the semesters are of six months, right? So now the basic question arises: what you are to study, what should be your blueprint? So that blueprint is basically this syllabus. So what happens mostly is a syllabus is given to the students and according to this syllabus, you are to do your studies. So what you'll find in this syllabus is, for example, this is the syllabus of first semester for the subject of legal method. So you have five units in this particular syllabus, right? So these five units are to be taught in that very semester. So this is of the first semester. So I'm talking about the odd semester. Right. So now, what is the significance of these units? And then what is the significance of the sub, uh, captions which are there in this unit? So now I'll relate this particular syllabus to exams. So ladies and gentlemen, you'll have exams in uh, a format of seven categories. Right. So this is, as you know, as Tarek Sar have told us, is basically continuous evaluation sort of. So you'll have GCT1. Then you'll have the midterm, then you'll have tutorial test, then you'll have project work, then you'll have GCT2, then you have enter, and then you have the grand viva. All right, so this seems a lot, right? So I'll just explain it to you. Now, from these five units, you will be asked questions in your exams, and those exams would be held in intervals so that you'll have enough time to study everything that is inculcated in the syllabus. Right, so for example, if you talk about GCT1, the questions from the GCT1 are asked from unit 1. Right, then we have the midterm. Now you have to remember one thing, the full form of GCT is general class test. It is a test that you give in your class. Right, and midterm and interim are two examinations. So you acknowledge them as midterm examination and interim examination. So you will have to make sure that if you know that general class tests are happening in classes and midterm examinations are basically held in examination halls, right? So now you know about the midterm examination, it is held from unit one, two and three. Two important things that are to be noted here and children often don't know what they actually are, are the tutorial test and the project work. So in order to understand what is a tutorial test, you need to understand what is a tutorial class. Okay. So what is a tutorial class? It is basically a class which is made for interaction. So the department will allot you a tutorial class in that particular class for the particular subject, the department will allot you a teacher. So that teacher will be interacting with a group of students. So what happens in class generally, it is it gets difficult to address all the doubts of about more than 100 students, right? So you are divided into groups from the department. And once you are divided into group, your group is allotted to a teacher who takes your tutorial classes. Now that teacher, once all your doubts and everything is con uh, done, and once uh, the teacher is satisfied that he is taught or he or she has taught you everything, they'll take a tutorial test. That test will also be counted in your examination marks, and you may you'll have to make sure that you pass it. Right? Based on that test, you'll also have to give one project, which I was talking about earlier. That is the project work. This can be from any topic as have been allotted by the teacher. After submission of project works, you'll have the GCT2, and then came the interim examination, which will inculcate the whole syllabus. You'll have to give it in accordance uh, with the whole syllabus, the syllabus that is here. And then ultimately, in the end, we'll have the grand viva. 
what you'll also see there is in the syllabus it is also inculcated the suggested readings you'll have to make sure you read these suggested readings and then come up with the best possible material for your studies so this was all as far as our syllabus and the working of the faculty is concerned so let us now talk about the law society so what is law society I'm pretty excited huh? The Law Society is basically a body of students. We organize programs and we organize programs for you all, right? For the people, for the students of the faculty. Why? Because we want you to learn. We want to polish you. Like a diamond is polished once it gets its, its own shine. We will have to polish you for the legal world. So we are here for that. So uh, our work is basically organizing events, uh, workshops like Moot Court, programs or research methodology workshop, moting skill workshops. So these are the workshops that we organize. Uh, the Law Society works in basically three committees. One is the administrative committee. You know that the dean is the president of the Law Society. We have our in charge, Mr. Tariq sir. Then we have our vice president, Madam Nouria Rafi. I'm the secretary and Mr. Muhammad Amne Alam is the moot court secretary. We are the administrative lead of the team. Then we have the media set, and we also have uh, editorial board. We have Mr. Rajat taking care of that. So, yes, that pretty much sums it up. We are here to help, and I believe, uh, and I'm pretty much sure that the Law Society will be your best friend for the years to come. So I hope maximum participation from all of you. And before I conclude, let me just. Uh, say this note that uh, as you know that we people are the torch bearers the law society people so i want you to know ki jalte hain ek chirag ki law se kai chirag jalte hain ek chirag ki law se kai chirag duniya tere khayal se roshan hui to hai thank you everyone and let me please also say this that lawyers you are in action. All right. Thank you. I guess we have a few questions. I think Kati will read out to you too. All right, I'll be more than happy to address the questions. Yes, please. <clears throat> Greetings, everybody. So um, the first question okay. to you, Atif Bhai, would be, what are the different positions in the law society and how are they selected? All right, so this is um, a question that I have heard from a lot of people. It is better needs to be answered. So uh, the law society has a hierarchy of posts, right? So you'll have to apply for those posts and once uh, you apply for the those posts you'll be having an interview and then after the interview if you are deemed fit for the post you'll be uh, you'll be selected for the post so how all of this happens so this happens uh, in accordance with the dean office you know that our, our dean professor Muhammad Ashraf sir is uh, the dean of the faculty so the dean office releases a notice which says that the posts uh, are now open and then you'll have to send your application letter with that application has to be a letter of intent along with your cv then the society would select you for interview and then you'll be present before a panel you'll be giving answer to the questions which are asked to you and then you'll be selected for the recommended post all right next question the next question would be a brief glimpse of what the law society would be doing for the students in this academic year. Oh, all right. So you want me to release the suspense, huh? <laughs> so uh, we have planned a lot of events and uh, there are some flagship events that we are going to have, uh, particularly the Surana and Surana attorneys will be associating with us for the National Criminal Law Moot Court Competition, which goes by the name Sir Sayyid and Surana and Surana National Criminal Law Moot Court Competition. 
So you all are most welcome there and I'm sure the society will find you and will take work from you. So you better be ready. Uh, then uh, we'll have uh, workshops, we'll have extramural lectures. You wait for them, we'll notify and then you join. All right. So that is all. All right. Thank you, Prati. So nice of you. Okay. Atif, I read one of the questions was, uh, do uh, one of the student asked that, do we have a uniform? So I think, uh, yeah, of course, uh, all the post bearers were sitting. Those were from BLLB. Of course, they have to wear a uniform. It's a black and white formals for boys and for girls as well. But um, a traditional formal for girls, it, it has to be uh, um, sure, the suit with the patta, shalwar kameez. And for boys, it is white shirt and black pants and the tie is must and your black blazer is a must for llm and phd there is no code but for blb honors as in when the time comes you have to come to the faculty in the dress okay so krati if you can look if I, there are any more questions on like asking about uh, the day-to-day -day basis business of the faculty yes i was coming to that yeah yeah sure all right, so I'll just address I'll I'll just address this once again. So uh, our faculty basically works in three courses. One is BLB honors, which is of five years. It is an integrated course. Another is LLM, which is a specialization. Uh, then there is uh, also PhD. Um, and pardon me, there are four basically four and the fourth is socio-economic offenses right so uh, what you are to concern yourself with is the bl or b honors course right so there's a uniform for that so you'll have to come in that uniform and you have to make sure that you are well dressed because part of being a lawyer is being well dressed so that you have the feels of coming to the faculty and then you'll know how you have to conduct yourself right be formal um talk formal and uh, do your best here Right. Okay. So that all. We have another important question. Hmm. Uh, that is, what is the importance of internships and when should we start pursuing them? If you can just share some light on it. So these are the questions that we'll take up in the workshops to come, but I'll just explain it right away. Right. So internships are basically uh, things which build your CV, right? Like uh, paper writing, build your CV, like taking participation in moot court competitions, winning moot court competitions, taking participation in debates, they build your CV. So uh, internships are necessary for people who want to go in corporate field or they want to pursue uh, the lawyering field, the litigation field. So you guys have to understand how the legal system work through internships, right? And if you are persuading for um, maybe uh, the PCSJ, the judiciary examination, then you'll have to uh, basically focus on your studies more. You can do an internship here and there for your own experience, but internships are basically uh, things which provide you experiences. Okay. Thank you, Atapai. That was helpful. All right. Thank you, Krati. Now, moving ahead with the program, the mic is over to Alvina. Thank you, Mr. Atif, for your valuable insights. Thank you, Ms. Norya, and Krati, and Sabi. <clears throat> so, though it has been said before, I, Alvina Reis Khan, the Joint Secretary of Law Society, on behalf of all the members, faculty, staff, senior students, and researchers, would once again reiterate, welcome my beloved juniors to the Faculty of Law. Aligarh is a city of tradition and brotherhood, you would never find yourself alone here. We, being a very well-knit and strong community, would never leave your side. Whenever the need arises, you will find, uh, find us answering to all your queries, helping you along and supporting you throughout your college journey and after. Furthermore, we remain very grateful to Professor Muhammad Ashraf, Dean Faculty of Law and the President of Law Society, along with Professor Muhammad Tarif, teacher in charge of Law Society, for the crucial insights and best wishes to the younger lot. It is their continuous guidance that enables us to get going. I am also grateful to the faculty members for their support and presence today. Appreciation is due specifically for our Vice President, Ms. Nadia Rafi, and our Secretary, Mr. Atif Javed, for making this orientation a success. Although 
We lament the fact that this had to happen in a virtual setting. We remain indebted to the tireless efforts of all the members of the Law Society who took keen interest and displayed great levels of enthusiasm for bringing this event to life. It might seem seamless to many, but the efforts in making this event seamless has indeed been a challenging and learning experience for all of us. So, as we approach the end of this orientation ceremony, I am reminded of a couplet by our very own Algerian sire, Janab Sehriyar, which goes like, Har mulaqat ka anjaam judai kyu hai? Ab, ab to har waqt yehi baat satati hai hume. Zindagi jab bhi teri baz melati hai hume, ye zameen chand se behtar nazar aati hai hume. With this, now I request Mr. Suheb Akhtar to conclude this ceremony by playing the Tarana of our university, followed by the national anthem. Thank you.
ಜನಗಣಮನ ಅಧಿನಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಪಂಜಾಬ ಸಿಂಧು ಗುಜರಾತ ಮರಾಠ ದ್ರಾವಿಡ ಉತ್ಕಳ ಬಂಗಾ ಹಿಂದ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ ಯಮುನಾ ಗಂಗಾ ಉಚ್ಚಲ ಜಲಧಿ ತರಂಗ ತವ ಶುಭ ನಾಮೆ ಜಾಗೆ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಗೆ ಗಾಹೆ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಥ ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ with this now we close the orientation ceremony and the meeting will be ended thank you all hope to see you soon in offline mode